Well, good afternoon, everybody. Um, just kind of going back to, to Saturday quickly. Uh, just we're still fighting consistency. That's the biggest thing. Um, and uh, uh, we put some really good consistent drives together offensively. Uh, had a big play to start the game. So there's some real positives. But uh, one of the big drives we had, we end up getting stopped at the four and not getting in the end zone and, and uh, end up getting three out of that. And, and that's been where we have been successful is getting some touchdowns or more touchdowns in the red zone. And, and that was a game obviously we needed touchdowns and um, didn't get that done and then uh, uh, defensively uh, I had some really good uh, series I had a lot of three and outs and gave our oppor offense an opportunity on a number of occasions when we were down uh, four late to uh, get ourselves a chance to get back in the game. But, uh, um, you know, uh, talking to Coach Hayes and the defensive staff, third and long just um, obviously was our our big detriment. We couldn't get off the field on third and long and, and gave up three touchdowns on third and long. And, and um, you know, for us to be successful, we have to win on third down. We have to be able to uh, get in the red zone and get touchdowns. And um, when you don't do those things, uh, and the matchups in, in my mind were pretty even as far as um, anybody could beat anybody in that game, uh, they had the upper hand because they were able to do some of those things. So, um, and then on special teams, we didn't do anything um, elite at all. We just were very average on teams. And, and when, you, when you're average uh, at that phase, and we need to win that phase, um, you can end up on the short end. And so I uh, had a good meeting with the guys yesterday, and um, they know that uh, we need to continue to, to battle, we need to continue to improve, need to continue to hold each other accountable. And had a good workout yesterday, and we know we're going into a, a, a tough environment in Texas Tech and uh, playing a night game, and our guys got to put their best foot forward. We got to play our best game. So we'll open it up. You went back and looked at those third downs. What were the specific issues and what you think you needed to do better? Well, the one we pressured um, and they picked it up, did a nice job picking it up, and, and then you got all one-on-ones and, and nobody gets home. And I thought J-Mac had good coverage and they threw a nice ball for, for a score. So that one, um, give, give them credit in my mind. And then they sprinted away from us one time uh, on, a, on a third down and, and we just didn't collapse coverage uh, based on the sprint out quickly enough and they scored. And then um, obviously uh, on the last Last one, we just had a blown coverage and uh, uh, did a good job getting pressure. And, and then when they scrambled out, we didn't follow uh, the scramble rules that we um, work on uh, on a weekly basis. And, and uh, they make a big play. And I guess one common theme in the last two games, you guys have actually come out and started really well on offense, scoring your first yeah. both times. Is there any key to sustaining that uh, you found over the years? You know, uh, sometimes it's the worst thing that happens to you too. You know, you get a big play and, and you think, boy, this is not, not that it's going to be easy, but you, you just relax a little bit. And uh, I, I don't think that's the case. I just think, once again, we're, we're when we when we struggle, and we were better this week than we were against Texas, but when, when you struggle to sustain the ability to rush the football, especially on early downs, I thought we were actually pretty good on third down uh, with our offense. Unfortunately, we were in too many third and longs and, and our percentages were okay on third and long. You just can't be in that many of them. Outside of the, the first possession of the last two games, um, you, you made mention after the game, it's been kind of tough sledding as far as explosive play. Mm -hmm. uh, what have been the difficulties there the last two games? Just, you know, a number of things, whether it's um, you know, having a guy open and uh, not not finding that guy that's open or having a guy open but missing a protection and getting hit to having a guy open, making the completion uh, or getting a run to somebody and we just get tripped up. You know, we're not kicking out of enough tackles um, as a running back, as a wide receiver. Uh, we're, we're not protecting all the time as an offensive line to give Skyler enough protection. There are some times that we think that there may be somebody open and, and Skyler doesn't see him because of, the, of, of maybe protection or something. So I think it's a combination of, of, of everything everything and which is you know uh, that's good and bad but we're, at least we're not pinpointing hey we're just can't we just can't get open or we can't uh, protect I and mean, we can do those things we've shown that we've done those things we're just not doing them consistently enough I see that Texas Tech ranks next to last in the FBS in 20 plus yard plays allowed this season is this a good week 
of any for you guys to get back on track with it? You know, uh, it, it's still about matchups. You know, I, I think that's a big thing is more about matchups. You know, we're, we're not an explosive offensive group either. So, you know, that probably now we can be. Uh, we've shown that in games. But uh, once again, the consistency factor has got to come through for us. And, um, you know, we need to find more explosive plays. And uh, that's the challenge this week. And part of it is it's not an excuse. Part of it's our health. Part of it's the, the, the running back situation is not really healthy back there and so when we think we're going to kick out of a tackle we get kids with with bad ankles and it's not once again it's not an excuse we still got to kick out of those that aren't able to do that kind of along the same lines texas tech really has struggled against the pass this year and i know you guys are a team that wants to establish the run mm-hmm. wants to be known as a running team but is it tough to have that approach when it's a, a defense that struggles so much against the pass you can go out there and really let skyler something yeah, we need to still stay within what we do because I just don't think we're a team that's going to get in four wides and throw it 45, 50 times. We don't want to do that uh, in the same respect as, as we watched the TCU game unfold. TCU had a lot of success uh, with quarterback scramble. I mean, they blitzed the heck out of, uh, out of TCU, Texas Tech did, and the quarterback beat him with his feet. And so Skyler's going to have to be able to avoid some, some rush as well simply because if we want to get into a throwing game, it's going to be a pressure game. We saw that in the last couple weeks that they've played. Uh, So we still need to establish the run so that we can't get into a nothing but throw and they can lay their ears back. Or if we can't run the football early and we're in a bunch of third and longs, they're they're going to pressure us. And and that's something that, uh, you know, we want to be able to run the football on a third and four, on a third and five. We've shown the ability to do that with the quarterback run or with our jet series. But when you're third and nine and ten, and, you know, defenses aren't as worried about it. Also, in special teams, Devin's kind of shown some, some uh, physical frustrations after some punts over the last few weeks. Have you noticed some some issues he's having in the playing game right now? Yeah, a, a little bit. Obviously, Devin's not punting to his capabilities, and that's, you know, it's, it's almost to the point of, you know, he's human because he was punting the ball you know, unbelievably well the first uh, three-fourths of the season, and he struggled the last uh, couple weeks. Uh, a little bit of it is technique, and we're working on uh, technique. I don't want him to get frustrated because then your technique does fall apart, and, and uh, he knows um, that he needs to be better, and, and I'm confident that he will be because he is a big weapon for us, and when he's punting the ball well, we're flipping the field when we're not moving the ball in offense and giving our defense a better opportunity, and when he's not, and we're getting into some short fields we just lose that field position game and so I'm you know I, I know uh, Devin's a tremendous punter he's got tremendous pride in, in his craft and, and I look for a big bounce back week from him how, how big of a role would you say just energy and emotion has played in wins and losses for your team it, it, it should play a big role without question. It, it has to. I mean, once again, we talk about this a lot. You get 12 opportunities to play. You, you better have great emotion. Uh, and and we can say there wasn't great emotion uh, on Saturday. Um, there was after the first play. You know, I saw a lot of great emotion. There was after a few stops. Probably not sustained. Probably not consistent. Um, but I, I also saw that when... We got down against Mississippi State, even though you know the, there was no panic on the sideline. There wasn't great emotion, and all of a sudden you flip it and make a play. You know, sometimes uh, momentum is the biggest thing that changes some of the emotion. But it's something that we visited about for sure uh, as a team yesterday. I was going to ask too about the <clears throat> play where Skyler got hit that was initially ruled targeting. There, did, did he take a, a big shot there? He took a pretty good shot there, without question. He was sore. Um, yesterday was not a concussion. I think that was the biggest thing that, that we were concerned about. And oftentimes you may not know it's a concussion during that time. And then the next day or that night, you start having uh, effects of a concussion and it was not. So we were pleased with that, that he's, you know, he's healthy, he's going to be able to play. But w- without a doubt at that time, I think it did rattle him, whether it was um, shoulder, just wind knocked out, but it was, it was a pretty good shot. You mentioned the Mississippi State game, you got the big kick return. You go to Texas, you get the big kick return. Was it, what was your emotion when you're watching the film of this West Virginia game? It's like, we can't get that play. Yeah. We just lack that play to be over the hill. Yeah, and 
you know, we had it the first play um, with the big touchdown pass, but then, uh, you know, a lot of times that emotion is getting a special teams play or getting a big turnover on defense as well. I mean, it's not, it, it's all three phases. And that's the thing that we talked about with our, with our guys yesterday is the offense can't say it was the defense fault. The defense can't say it was the offense or, or teams. I mean, it was, and us as coaches have to be better as well. We, we address that uh, ourselves of saying, we've got to put you in better positions. Um, but we also have to just bottom line make some plays and uh, uh, in in the style of offense the style of defense that we're running it, right now if you don't have those big plays then you you can't shoot yourself in the foot with penalties and and you can't miss a tackle or you can't um, you know rough the snapper and give them another possession all those things when you are a team like us that doesn't have to play perfect to win we, we're not there but we, we're not going to light it up and put 58 points on the board and scoring in three plays like an Oklahoma can. So when we methodically move it down, you've got to get touchdowns. When, when we are a defense that is going to make some plays, but we're still young at some spots that people are going to make some plays on us, when we get a stop and we get off the field, we can't can't give them a free possession and that's those are things and our kids know it our guys know it that we were our own worst enemy in some of those situations you go back to the stats and outside of turnovers if you looked at those stats you would think you won the ball game was this really a case of they, they even had more penalties than mm -hmm. you guys was this a case of when these things happen you know they convert a third and long into a touchdown yep you get the penalty that changes a zero point outcome to a seven point outcome just kind of where everything was parked yeah, no, no doubt. And, and when you're going to be into the games that we've been into, 27-24, 24-20, those are critical plays. If you're in a 10-7 game, you know, uh, yeah, those things are going to be an impact, but maybe not as much. If you're in a 56-52 game, they're not. But where we're at right now, where it comes down to all three phases having to be on point, all three phases for us have to play well or not lose that phase for us to be successful. You're right, you can forget the stats. They were, they were able to get uh, a couple of turnovers. They were able to flip the field. Um, and the penalties obviously uh, gave them the one possession. We don't have to play perfect, but we have to play more consistently in all three phases. And, and we're well aware of that, guys, that, uh, um, you know, it's not just the run game. There's some things in the throwing game. It's it's protection. It's um, it's running the right route. It's it's reading the right coverage on how it's on how, how we're turning the coverage. Is it single high, two high? Just like on defense, it's not just the coverage. Uh, sometimes it's 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 a run uh, pressure that doesn't get home. Sometimes it's missing contain um, on a pass play, and then all of a sudden the guy gets outside of contain, and now it extends a play. All those things are a factor. That's why, you know, for us it was it was not easy. But to explain to the guys, hey guys, this is a team loss. Coaches, offense, defense, teams, and uh, we need to continue. We need to continue to improve because we knew we we're going to have some problems. We knew we were going to have some uh, some tough times, but uh, um, we got to move on. We got to keep getting better. Who's a guy or two that we don't ask about a lot in here that you think has had a really solid year? Like who comes to mind in that question? Um, well, uh, on defense, I would say Jerron McPherson's had, had, had an exceptional year. Uh, I think Middy's had an exceptional year. I think Eli's had an exceptional year of guys that I don't hear of, you know, the Wyatts and, and some of those, and Deshaun's and Reggie's that you hear all the time on offense. I think Nick Kultmeyer's had a really good year. Uh, I think the guy that he's been banged up but playing much, much better in the run game for us is Blaze Gammon. I think Blaze has really embraced his role and, and really made some nice plays. Uh, and uh, I, I appreciate the role players doing what they're doing. Brock Monty's had a great year on special teams, and nobody really talks about Brock uh, a whole lot. And Brock's fine with that. He just does his job, but he's had a really good year as well. What is Joe Urban's status? Um, Joe was suspended for a violation of team rules last week, and that's why he wasn't dressed. And so we're going to evaluate because he's right at the four games right now. So we're going to evaluate what we're going to do. He's reinstated. He, he served his, his, his penalty, and, and we're, we're fine with Joe uh, from that respect. But it's still going to be based on Jordan James. Um, James did not practice yesterday. We hope he can today. Jordan did. So a little bit still based on that. Given what you talked about 
last five or ten minutes, yep. plus the two zero turnover margin. Does that kind of typify your margin for error this season? As Absolutely. Yep, you know, um, the, we've been better on the turnover margin. We weren't on, on Saturday, um, the explosive play battle. Uh, and then it, the simple thing of staying on the field and getting off the field on third down and what you do in the red zone. You know, what you do in the red zone. And you can go back to the wins that we've had as well as the losses. You can look at third down. We do in critical third downs critical third down situations and red zone. Those those two, the turnovers, we get all, but the red zone of, of are we scoring touchdowns and are we preventing touchdowns? Because you guys know as well as I do, the offenses are good enough in this league to move the football uh, up and down. There's too much talent. What do you do when you get around the 20? What's the most distinct or unique challenge that Texas Tech presents you guys? Tempo on offense. Just they're, they're going to go as fast as they can and try to get 100 plays. Uh, and if they get a first down, the chains are never going to be set and the ball is going to be snapped. And it is a Chinese fire drill. It is as fast as you can go, much faster than anybody we've played this year. So for us to replicate that in practice for starters is difficult. We'll do the best job we can. But that's the number one thing. You know, defensively, they've got some really good players and, and you know, there are three down. They're going pressure us all those things that you see every week but this week is just the tempo of how fast they're going to go uh, going, going back to the the hit on, on skylers like i know that the, the targeting call is always just such kind of a judgment thing but i guess were you at all surprised given what you know about the nature of the rule that was overturned um i didn't see and i still to this day i have not seen the replay uh, and I know we're, we're better at the targeting rule, but I also know there's going to be continued discussion on the targeting rule. And what, I'm, what I mean by that is I'm a big advocate of not eliminating kids from games for something that is a bang-bang thing. I think Eli had one this year that I think got overturned, but we're like, oh, boy. You know, it really didn't look like a, a malicious targeting hit. Um, and then there's other ones that I think are, and, and somebody should sit. But unless they go to a targeting one, targeting two, targeting three, tier one, tier two, tier three, and then who's going to decide that? Is that going to be the Big 12 office? Is that going to be a, some arbitrator that doesn't to say at the end of the day, you know what, we're going to suspend you for another half because of what you did there. Or, man, it wasn't as bad as we thought. We're going to take that half back or give you that half back. I just, I, I know one thing. You're dealing with player safety, and all of us as, as coaches, that's the first and, first and foremost thing we want is player safety. So we're better even than we were oh, two, three years ago of what it's been. And then I mean, you got started with a three-game win streak open season, then you have two losses, then you rebounded with a three straight win. Yep. Having done that, do you, do you as coaches do you, and do you think the team, do they take confidence that, hey, you guys can win this season on three-game wins? Yeah, I think so. I, I really do. And that's the ebbs and flows of, of your first year. I, I really believe that of, you know, we're going to go through some, and we talked about this, guys, when I took the job, probably talked about it in media day and stuff. We're going to go through some some ups and downs. We're going to go through some really uh, positive things, and we're going to have some hard times. And that's, that's difficult for our staff. It's difficult for me. It's difficult for these seniors. I know it is. Uh, and, and that's the challenge the, is of being able to right the ship and being able to, st to stay positive. There's no reason for us to, and we came in here yesterday and we just kind of told the guys the truth of where we were at. Nobody was yelling and screaming because I think our guys are busting their tail. I really do. Um, we're just not consistent enough and not making all the plays. And, and that's going to be the sign of, of learning the offense, learning the defense, as well as just getting comfortable with us as coaches. Viking Gill, do you think he'll be able to he practiced yesterday and on, on a limited basis, but he is um, knock on wood to be cleared today. And if he doesn't have any issues today, um, you know, after he practices, does he not have any headaches or anything like that? He would be ready to go, yes. And it's been a while since you've had a road primetime game. Just out of curiosity, what do you do with the team? leading up to the game because you're entertained all day on Saturday. Yeah, well, um, you know, we got to go back to really 
even what we did with uh, who do Nickel State the first game or or Oklahoma State, we kind of go through that schedule, uh, and we don't change anything on Friday night, uh, and then on Saturday we just have a little bit more of an extended walkthrough uh, in the morning, which is good. There's a benefit to it because you just can't practice as long as we can right now. I mean, we're not out there very long, and it's difficult too when. You know, the O-line and D-line, for the most part, the same guys are playing every snap. So how much can you go full contact with those guys? You, you just can't. But you need still the mental reps for the backups and the guys that are, that are going to be the heir apparent. So we'll spend a, a good amount of time on Saturday morning walking through. And a lot of that may be with some of the backups because they're not getting as many snaps when you don't practice as long. When you first came K-State here, um, Dalton Jones, a walk-on from the state of Kansas. How how can you tell that playing football at K-State was really important to Dalton Jones? Uh, just watching him through winter conditioning and watching him in spring ball, he just the game just was pretty natural to him, uh, and he understood defenses so well. He understood how to set up a defensive back. He understood, you know, the difference between a middle of field open, middle of field closed coverage. He just he was on in, in sync with with Skyler all the time, and uh, I just think the world of, of of Dalton and what he's done here and the type of career he's had because he came in here with a chip on his shoulder, and he's a great example for all the walk-ons that not only that we have in this program, and some of them have already earned scholarships, but the amount of walk-ons that we're going to continue to recruit here, you just look at him and say, it's not like you're just going to make it your senior year. The kid's had a really good career, uh, and it's because of the, the work he's put in, the time he's put in, uh, and the chip on his shoulder to say, I, I know I'm not a scholarship guy. I'm going to outwork everybody and prove that I'm going to be not only a scholarship guy, but a productive player. During the offseason, there was some issues with that wide receiver. How did you maybe see him take the reins and elevate his game even more? Uh, he's he's taken more of a vocal leadership and I challenged him to do that because that just wasn't, you know, he didn't mind doing it, but I challenged him every day. Come on, you got to keep teaching these guys. Not, not about the route tree and some of those things. Those are easy things, but about how you, how you become a pro, how you become a great player, how you, how you fight through when your legs are tired, how you fight through the mental issue of, or the mental strain of we're changing this, uh, this whole uh, concept because of the coverage we're seeing. And he's doing it still today because we're still sometimes messing some things up with young receivers and we're playing a lot of young guys at the receiver position and we have to have, continue to have patience because those guys don't have the the amount of snaps under their belt that Dalton Schoen does and you know his his leadership uh, ability uh, has been tested this year and I think he's come through really well and speaking of young receivers can you talk about Philip Brooks's emergence and progress yeah, you know, Phillip's always uh, an explosive kid, but we've been battling some leg issues with, with Phillip all year long. And so some weeks he's closer to 100% than he is others. I think we had to sit him one game because he just couldn't go, or if he did, he was very limited. Um, you know, I, he's getting better of understanding what we're doing. The problem is Philip needs a bunch of reps because he just hasn't had him much because he was really a return guy uh, as last year and early coming into the season. And then as the more he learned the game and learned at receiver, the more reps he's gotten. Um, but when you're limited because of some nagging injuries in your legs, you just can't run those routes all the time. And so uh, the best is still to come for Philip. I still hope in the next three games we have, but I'm also excited for the future for him. Any else? One of the last one. Coach, we've been talking a lot about consistency today. Um, Blake Lynch is a guy that's missed one kick all year. Yeah. Um, maybe the best uh, compliment for a kicker is that nobody talks about him. Is that accurate? Absolutely, and uh, and Blake's another one of those guys that you could throw in with the Blaze Gammons and Brock Monies is he's just had a phenomenal year, and he's a really consistent guy, and he and he's he just he wants to be perfect in his craft, and that's what I appreciate about Blake is, um, you know, every day he's out there with his same routine, and as a kicker, it's about your routine, and he's locked into his routine, and, and you got to give credit uh, to Randon uh, Platner, the the long snapper, as well as to Devin uh, as holding. Because 
because we've been really good in those two areas, and those are another things that, boy, the snap wasn't high, and Devin found a way to get it down. We've been solid there. Thanks, guys. Thanks.